Thank you for watching this video from Schoolroom Help. So in this video, we're gonna discuss flowcharts and pseudocode. There's some basic symbols that we're gonna discuss in this video. So we'll go over those real quickly. The first is the oval. Oval is also known as a terminator. So the oval is used to represent the start and end to a process. The next symbol we're gonna discuss is the rectangle. The rectangle is also known as a process. The rectangle is used to show a process, task, action, or operation. The shape represents something to be done or an action to be taken. Note, the text within process shapes almost always include a verb. The next is the parallelogram. The parallelogram represents data. So when you think of the parallelogram, it's used to show input or output from a data source. Examples include getting an order as an input and sending an email as an output. The next is the diamond. The diamond represents a decision in your flowchart. The diamond denotes a question or a branch in the flowchart sequence. These decisions represent a yes or no, true or false response. So think of them as similar to booleans. The next symbol is the cylinder. The cylinder is the database storage. So the cylinder represents the data that is stored in your system's database. The last symbol we'll discuss is the arrow or connector. It's also the directional flow. So the arrow is a connector that shows directional flow between the various shapes representing the sequence of steps in your flow chart. All right, now we're gonna discuss pseudocode. Pseudocode is a plain language description of the steps created for a program. Pseudocode often uses structural conventions of a normal programming language, but is intended for human reading rather than machine learning. So in our example for this video, we're going to use pet bag boarding and grooming. So here's the system specification document. Pet bag is a, a grooming company that provides boarding and grooming services for dogs and cats. They want to modernize their system. And so they're asking us to create the software. For this video, we're, gonna, we're going to focus on the functionality of chat, uh, check in pets. So pet check-in, to update our current process, we outline our current manual check-in process below, which involves multiple steps and, verif and verifications. First, we determine whether the pet is a dog or a cat. Next, we determine the boarding spaces available for the pet. There are currently 30 spaces for dogs, 12 spaces for cats. We would like the ability to update these settings as needed. If boarding space is available, we identify whether the pet is new or returning visitor if the pet has stayed with us before. So additionally, we would like the ability to gather information on the length of stay for each pet and if the grooming services are required. Grooming services are only offered to dogs that stay for two or more days. That is not offered for cats. So when you're creating a, a, uh, a uh, flow chart, one of the first things you want to do is create a Word doc and create the steps that you're going to um, take in making your flow chart. So here I've outlined the steps and put them down in sequence and you can follow along here and see the order in which we're going to create this flow chart. So uh, I'll let this finish going and then we'll get to the uh, flow chart. Okay, so now we have created the flow chart after, after reviewing this Word doc. And so we're gonna start out with the oval, which is the start. Then we're going to the parallelogram, which represents data. And then we have our first decision. Okay, so on this first decision, is pet a dog? Your yes or a no? And I just wanna pause one second and just explain something. Sometimes I've seen where people say is pet a dog or a cat and then they branch off. If it's a cat, they go one way. If it's a dog, they go another way. And I just want to clarify on a decision, it's either a yes or a no, a true or a false. So you kind of think of it like a Boolean. So you have to ask is pet a dog? Yes, you go one way. No, you don't. And then you move to the next step is pet a cat. And so on this step, 
you would say, yes, it is a cat and go down or no, it's not. And if it's not a pet, if it's not a dog and if it's not a cat, you're going to the end terminal and you're ending this process. Now we're going to data input. So we say, yes, it is a dog. So we're gonna go and we're going to uh, get the current dog count. We're gonna say, yes, this is a cat. We're gonna get the current cat count. We're going to add this information to the database. Okay, after getting current dog count, we can check to see if there's less than 30 dogs already at the facility. If there's, if there's more than 30, then we have to end the process because you have no more room for dogs. We're gonna do the same thing for cats. Is the current cat count less than 12? If it's less than 12, they can continue to stay. If not, it's gonna end the process. Move on. So the current dog count is less than 30, so we have a yes answer. We go to onboard dog, which is a data entry. We're going to do the same thing for the cat. If the uh, cat count is less than 12, we will onboard the cat. Okay, so the next step is a process. In this uh, step, we are adding plus one to the current dog count. We're gonna do the same thing for the cat. We're gonna add plus one for the cat count. After you have inputted the current dog count, you will record the number of days the dog will be staying. After recording the current cat count, you'll record the number of days the cat will be staying. Before, Okay, so after we have recorded the number of days the dog will be staying, um, and the cat will be staying. The cat will move past these next two decisions because uh, grooming is not offered to cats. And grooming is offered to dogs only if they're staying greater than two days. So we're gonna ask the question if the dog is staying greater than two days. If no, the dog would skip past the next uh, question. If yes, we would move to the next question. Okay, so the next question is whether or not they would like grooming. So we ask the question, grooming requested. If yes, we move down. If no, we skip and follow along to the next process. Okay, so if they say yes to grooming, they'll come down here to tag dog to be groomed on checkout. This is a process, so that's the shape of a rectangle. And then from there, we come over to the final decision. Has pet stayed with us before? So um, you have the uh, arrows coming down, one from the cat, one from the decision if pet is uh, less than, if dog is less than two days, and then one from if they decide no to uh, grooming. So now we're at our last uh, decision. Has pet stayed with us before? If no, then you'll collect all information. If Yes, you will update existing information. And with both of these, you'll store that collected updated information along with the pet count, date of admission and grooming status. And then after all that is stored into the database, you come to the final step, which is the end of the process. So I hope that you have uh, got a good basic understanding of flowcharts and pseudocode. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave uh, comments in the uh, channel or on the website. And uh, that's it. Thank you for watching.